Hey guys, it's Kelsey and I am playing along with Multi-Photo Monday today. So Dolly has given us a super fun inspiration photo for us to use along with a sketch today. So here's the inspiration. There is basically the colors I'm really trying to pull from in that photo and then here is this awesome sketch. So uh, I'm starting out with One Canoe 2 Saturday afternoon. I really have been dying to use this paper pad and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to use it for this page or not. Um, just because the photos aren't exactly the same as the ones in the inspiration, but I figured if I could pull a red, a yellow, a green, and a blue, it might still work even if they're not the same shade. I loved that stripe there that didn't end up making it, but I do have all of the colors that I need in this paper pad, so I decided to go for it. Um, the color tones are just a little bit different, but you see I have my red, I have my green, I have a scrap of blue, and there's some yellow. Um, right away when I looked at the sketch, I thought it would be really fun to do this large grassy section on the bottom with this red plaid on top. It really reminded me of a picnic. This would have been a wonderful picnic layout <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the picnic that's okay um, but i'm just going to paper piece my background by putting these two chunks together to start off that sketch um, so i thought that was a really cool starting point to play with and i really like having this because you have that um, seam where then i'm going to anchor and start building from so that's really cool because that automatically when you have two two patterns like this next to each other it draws your eye to that seam and that's where everything is going to be anyways so i am cutting down down one of these photos to be a smaller size just like it is in the sketch um, I didn't really need the whole paper anyways this is Bennett's five-week checkup so you see my sister there to the left with her sweet little baby Bennett and then the doctor is examining him there on the right so I thought those are the perfect size for this sketch my sister's wearing green the doctor's wearing pink you know it's okay I'm gonna say it could be a kind of shade of red <laughs> So I think it's going to work fine, especially my sister's jacket. I think um, that little green shirt goes perfect. So right now I'm just trying to start pulling in the other colors. So I make sure I have all of those colors represented. I have a few scraps. So I have a scrap of a yellow and a scrap of a navy. So I'm just using those to kind of pull that lower element of the page together. I'm trying to get that lower right hand cluster down, which basically consists of a few strips and a few banners. So I'm just using some scraps I already have in the colors I need to get on here and putting it together. This was really fun because I'll tell you, I never ever ever would have looked at this paper pad and put these colors or these patterns together. Um, it's really unexpected looking to me, but I really like the overall look. Um, so that's surprised me um, and excited me at the same time. So that's really cool. Um, that little scrap of the yellow on the bottom on camera, it's really hard to see that that's yellow, that light strip on the bottom there, but it is. I also had another scrap that I matted that smaller photo in. So again, that is the other yellow pattern. Um, so that's what that is. I know that doesn't really read as yellow on camera. <laughs> um, and then I'm just trying to get a few of those strips that come out from behind the photo um, up there. So I don't want to run it all the way across the seam. I want you to see that red meet the green. Um, at first, I think I might run this little blue strip all the way across to kind of cover the seam. But I, at, in the end, I think it's kind of interesting. You can see the seam and that's the way it is in the sketch as well. And usually when I'm using a sketch, I really do like to try and do it as close to the sketch as possible. So that's what I decide. I'm going to go ahead and get these glued down. This is a really great way to use scraps as well because when you have this large photo section, you can really get away with using smaller pieces and make them look like bigger pieces because of course you don't see that huge gap once you have these photos down. So that's really cool getting a, a scrap so much mileage out of it. And then I also had this little camera scrap that I do that with as well. So cameras, this brought in the blue, brought in the yellow. So I'm really trying to make sure all of the colors from the inspiration are represented. I do cut a little banner out of this one like it is in the sketch. And I think that looks really, really sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and get that down. That'll just take me a second. <coughs> Excuse me. I really don't need a whole lot on that left side because I do end up scooching the photos pretty far over to the left. Um, there's this little aqua heart on that navy blue strip. And I want it to show. I didn't want to cover up that tiny little heart. So that's why I keep scooching it clo closer and closer to the left because I don't want to cover that little heart up. And then there are a bunch of circular elements in the sketch. So I really wanted to pull that into this layout. I thought about pulling a white doily in up there, which usually I would have loved, 
But for whatever reason, it wasn't working for me this time. It was really bizarre because I usually never say no to a doily. So I let it sit up there for a second so I can think about it. Um, there is this blue and yellow house in one of the cut apart sheets. So I went ahead and fussy cut it. I'm focusing on this lower right hand corner for a second because I've just stuck on the doily. <laughs> um, there also was a little camera banner in the cut apart. So I went ahead and fussy cut the camera as well just to pull that icon down to the bottom corner um, as it is in the top. So I'm gonna layer those up there on the banners in the lower right hand corner. I really like how that looks. It's not that we're really at our house, but I really think we're in a building, it could work. <laughs> Again, it has the colors. I'm really trying to channel Miranda and do if the color, if the color goes, it can go on the page. I'm really trying because this one, I'm really trying to do the colors and the inspiration justice. <laughs> so we're making it work because I was determined to use this paper pad and I will do what I have to. So there's a house going on a doctor visit page. So that happened. Um, now I'm going back up to the top. I took the doily off, couldn't do it. I tried. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get the photos glued down. And then I come up with a different way to incorporate circles, which I'm really pleased about. So you'll see that in a second. But I wanted to go ahead and get this glued down because I knew that's where that was gonna go. Um, so yeah, I pull out my circle nested dies. I still have this blue scrap of um, hexagon paper I really wanted to incorporate as well, even though it's not the same shade as the other blues that are on there. I decided I was just going to die cut a whole bunch of circles and just have them kind of scattered down the page. If you look at the sketch, there are lots of circles. There's some larger circles kind of clustered around the, the photos, but there's also a whole bunch of like little circles clustered around kind of as embellishment. So I kind of melded those two ideas together <laughs> to cut a whole bunch of circles and kind of have them bubbling down the page, I guess. So I'm gonna cut those really quick. I just use some washi tape to kind of glue them down to that paper so they don't shift or anything while they go through my little die cutting machine. That is the We Are Memory Keepers Evolution and I love it. It's the only one I've ever tried, so I don't know that I could really give you comparisons, but I've never had an issue with it. It's wonderful. So went ahead and cut all those circles. It's gonna take me a minute to kind of detach everything. Um, I'm trying to make sure my washi doesn't tear my paper since I went ahead and already cut all of these. I don't wanna to have to recut any um, so yeah, got all of those and then I'm just gonna end up scattering them down the page That's the only thing that really deviates from the sketch But at the same time I got that inspiration directly from the sketch. So I think that's really cool I'm really excited to see the other ladies layouts and how they use these Because it's gonna be really interesting to see them use the same colors in the same sketch and see how different all of our layouts turn out I'm really excited about that because I took this kind of in a different direction by doing this kind of thing. Um, and there's a lot of things in the inspiration photo I didn't pull from that maybe one of them did. There were gold stars I thought at some point I might pull in and I didn't. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how that goes. But I'm gonna glue these down. I like how they're scattered right now. I tried to do them random. They don't look too random anymore, but I like the combination of the bigger ones kind of trickling down to the smaller ones. And I really like how the last ones hung off the page. I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those up. I have two left over, so those will go back in the paper pad. Maybe I'll use them as an embellishment cluster on a future page. I thought about stitching something. One of these cool little stitching uh, stencils says right now as like a title, like a stitched title. I thought that would have been really cool, but it was just a little bit too long for the area I wanted to put it in. So I ended up not doing that. So thought about stitching, I'm not going to. I did realize my uh, little embellishment on the bottom area was looking a little not balanced because the red is only in this top section. It's not anywhere else and that was bothering me. So I did go cut a scrap of this red and cut it into a banner and added that to that lower section. And that makes me feel a lot better. All of a sudden it's balanced again to me. <laughs> it was just looking like the red didn't belong because it was only in that top section. So that helped a lot already. And then I did have these three little blue dots, enamel dots left over. So I sprinkled them amongst the circles as well. Um, and now I'm going for my title. So I do go, I'm just gonna title this checkup. It's just a doctor's checkup. I didn't really think it needed to say anything more than that. <laughs> this yellow isn't the exact yellow 
in the other papers. That bothered me a tiny bit, but it's actually the yellow that's closest to the inspiration photo's yellow, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, brought that yellow out a little more, so um, I was fine. I also have some yellow enamel dots there that you'll see me pulling in a minute. Um, those yellows, I think, bridge the gap between the thickers and the yellow in the papers. So I think after I put those on there, the yellow goes better. <laughs> but I'm just going to cluster those in two separate areas. And then um, I do have some navy enamel dots from a separate uh, pack that I end up pulling in as well to round out my little group of three. Um, basically, this whole page, I'm just trying to balance everything. <laughs> so I feel like I kind of got the yellow balanced now, um, but there's still this kind of gap with the navy that I want to pull in. First, I do want to do a tiny bit of journaling to pull red into one more area. I'm just trying to color match the red, so I like that one that I just did. So I'm just going to do a little bit of journaling underneath uh, that smaller photo. It's just going to see, say, five week checkup and the date, um, but I really like that. That brought the red into one other area. Um, that's really all the information I needed on this page. The photos are self-explanatory. Um, so now I'm back to looking at navy. I just thought that I was maybe almost done, but but it needed something like a little something else. So I went and found this little cute navy pleather bow. I think that looks really, really cute. And then um, these little Dear Lizzie decorative brads have some enamel dots on them that Lisa sent me. So um, they were the perfect shade of blue to balance out that bow. So I just did a little blue in each cluster with the yellow enamel dots. And then I have that bow down there. So I feel like that really helps balance that area as well. So I think we're almost done. This was a whole lot of fun. So make sure you guys check out the other ladies that are playing along today. I will link them in the description. Um, do you want to play along as well? Please do. Please tag us. But here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.